former Democratic presidential candidate Marianne Williamson responded to Roe v. Wade on Twitter saying, quote, if Democrats are thinking the fury of this moment will pass, then they are mistaken. If they think it will all turn into support for them rather than anger at them, they are also mistaken. Democrats should do something massive and tangible for people pretty much right now. Author Marianne Williamson joins us now to react to this moment. Marianne, so great to have you with us. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. So what is your sentiment uh, you know, behind this tweet? Obviously, we're in a, in a moment where uh, abortion rights will be uh, rolled back in many states. And I see a lot of uh, pessimism from uh, Democrats. I think a lot of sense that their leaders have actually already failed them. And, and while you know, Democrats are trying to, uh, political figures are trying to say, this is why you need to support us, I'm hearing a lot of, and it sounds like you think this is a very legitimate way to feel, <coughs> that the, the harm was already done, that they were already being counted on and they failed. Well, they've had many opportunities over the years to codify Roe v. Wade. Uh, President Obama had said that he was going to do that um, during his first campaign for the presidency. And when an hour after the decision came down, Nancy Pelosi was texting out a fundraising appeal uh, that we all needed to vote for Democrats. We all needed to send them money in order to codify Roe v. Wade when she herself had been down in Texas supporting the last supposedly pro-life, anti-choice Democratic candidate, Henry Cuellar just uh, weeks ago. So the hypocrisy of the Democratic Party has been very difficult uh, for people. You know, 63% of Americans did not want Roe v. Wade overturned. And the Democrats have been using um, vote for us, vote for us, vote for us to save Roe v. Wade for a very long time. And the fact that they did not more, that they were not more vigilant about this um, is of course frustrating for people. At the same time, I think that it's not just that. I think that in the years, um, in the two years almost since um, uh, President Biden has been president, so many of the things that people thought, oh, if only we get the, the Democrats in there, these things will happen, whether it had to do with cancellation of the college loan debt, expansion of Medicare, uh, a more vigorous uh, environmental protection, et cetera. So yes, what I was saying in that tweet was that the Democrats better do something right now. Uh, when Nancy Pelosi read a poem and uh, the members of the House saying, God bless America on the Capitol steps. That was not the kind of vigorous political action uh, that, that many of us want. We want to hear about their ideas for packing the court. We want to hear about their ideas uh, for ending the filibuster. And the fact that the president has come across kind of like, yeah, it's really too bad. I'm stunned. I'm sad. Uh, of course, people are very upset. Yeah, I, compl I completely agree. I've been very critical of the Democrats in this regard. I think they don't do enough listening to their base. And in fact, I think in these years coming, this moment has actually been anticipated for years now by the exact people that they've dismissed and called alarmists, and they've really dragged their feet and done nothing. And I don't think that this is a, even though they're going to use this as an opportunity to try to mobilize you know, support, I think this moment is actually serving as proof that the Democrats don't fight back. They don't do what we need them to do. Republicans are very... Um, engaged and committed to serving their base, but the Democrats are not doing that for us. And I don't think that this is inspiring hope. Do you have any hope at all that they're going to, you know, fight? Because I don't think they are. What I've seen from Biden and Pelosi and them seem to be a lot more of the same empty gestures and not even particularly lively rhetoric to support us even in what they're saying, right? They came out and immediately went to condemn and silence the protesters like, oh, keep it keep it cute, keep it quiet, you know, and then they're asking for money. But like you said, and this was something I actually pointed out recently, they supported, they say, oh, vote for us. That's how we're going to codify Roe. But then you see them supporting anti-choice candidates. So what is there to really inspire this faith? What do you think? Well, we have a choice between the abusive ones in the Republican Party and weak ones in the Democratic Party. So it's kind of like walking a fine line. You're so angry at them that at the same time, you want them to step up. Right. Um, what you know, at, at, at this point, what's going to happen is that the Democrats will either, as you said, respond to their base or what we're going to they're going to be doing is simply inviting another uh, wave of MAGA candidates. You know, I live in Washington, D.C., and I had always heard that this city is like a bubble. It's more than that. Energetically, it's almost like a walled city. I understand how Trump got there because I understand that there's there's such an impervious, impervious energy here to the rage and the frustration mm. and the mm -hmm. pain that people out there are feeling. And I fear that there continues to be 
um, almost a lackadaisical approach to the suffering mm. of so many people. When you have uh, the majority of Americans who have to live paycheck to paycheck, when you have one in four Americans who cannot even afford uh, to get the, the medicine that is prescribed by their doctors, when you have half a million homeless people, <clears throat> when you have people having to decide whether to pay their rent or to buy insulin, it, some political party, and it used to be the Democrats, were standing passionately, powerfully, unabashedly, and unapologetically for the working people of the United States. Right. The Democrats need to become that again, or they will lose power in this country probably for decades. Something has got to change because the American people are seeing that this system is not working for them. And I'll tell you something, it's basic psychology. Mm. If daddy has, beating, has been beating you up and mommy has just been wringing her hands, and doesn't call the police on daddy and doesn't even leave daddy. But all she does is tell you that after you get your whooping, I'll give you ice cream and cookies. Or don't you cry too loud. Up to be more angry at mommy mm. than at daddy. That's, that's true. So true. That's, that's very people true. People are so angry at the Democrats. Well, right. And in, in this time of chaos with the Democratic Party's agenda, supporters of Hillary Clinton actually <clears> took <throat> to Twitter to air grievances with women who were aligned more with Senator Bernie Sanders. Uh, that's happened in the past and it's happening again. We saw that one user had uh, tweeted, here's the list of women that are responsible for why Roe v. Wade has been overturned. Ridiculous. It's just a who's who of our show. Susan Sarandon, <laughs> Brianna Joy Gray, <laughs> Nina Turner, Turner, Rose McGowan, Crystal Ball, Katie Halper, and uh, Marianne herself. Uh, any other women I'm missing, it said. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I guess Rising is single-handedly responsible for this. Imagine is a list a... and leaving out RBG. <laughs> a, list, a list of women responsible and RBG doesn't even get a head nod. Not that I'm blaming her in its entirety, but you would think. And leaving out James Comey. All I, all I can speak to is my own circumstances. I did uh, support Bernie Sanders in the primary in 2016. Once that was over, although I do think it was unfairly decided, uh, I absolutely uh, supported and voted for Hillary Clinton. And I think it's worth noting that if the DNC had not put their fingers on the scale, which they clearly did in that, uh, in that um, primary season, then the winner would have either been Hillary or Bernie. But either way, Democrats particularly would have felt good about the campaign, and I do not think Donald Trump would have ever become president. Mm. In response to the argument that if Hillary Clinton won in 2020, Roe versus Wade would not have been struck down, writer Ross Barakin said this, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's role in the death of Roe versus Wade looms even larger because it's not entirely clear Hillary Clinton would have governed with a Democratic Senate had she won in 2016. Most people assume Clinton's victory would have given her the Senate. As we saw in 2020, there were easily scenarios where the 2017 Senate could have been split 50-50 or even been 51-49 Republican with President Hillary Clinton. McConnell may have been blocked her, may have even blocked her for four years. Mm. Yeah. What do you think about that? People in Washington love to play that game. If this had right. been different, if that had been different. You know, the very fact that uh, when I was talking before about how people in Washington don't seem to know what's going on out there. We all know President Obama could have appointed Merrick Garland. And President Obama and others in Democratic leadership, I think, could have been more concerned about what would happen if uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg did not resign. But everybody here just assumed that Hillary was going to win. That's why they weren't very concerned. Mm -hmm. But once again, they would have been more concerned if they had had more of a feel for what was going on in this country and the rage that people were feeling. That's the irony about Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, like Donald Trump, did acknowledge the rage, the legitimate rage that people were feeling. So the Democrats had a progressive populist and they weren't going to go for the person who said, let's just keep it the way it is and continue on the success uh, of the last eight years because too many people did not feel that they were experiencing success. So people went for the authoritarian populist, and they will go for an authoritarian populist again if the Democratic Party doesn't step up and do more for the working people of the United States in, the, in a way that matches their own rhetoric. 
Right. I think a lot of times, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I think we forget when we, we criticize that Hillary lost <clears throat> and, you know, Biden won. We forget Biden didn't necessarily win because we love Biden. At that point, we already learned from four years of Trump and people rushed out to get him out. At the time of Hillary, we simply, a lot of us simply didn't believe Trump was going to win. I, I remember, I'm, I'm not a U.S. citizen, so I didn't vote, so no one hold me responsible for anything. But I do remember being fundamentally shocked that mm-hmm. Trump won. And I think that was a lot of the climate. There were a lot of people, I remember friends of mine, who didn't bother to vote. They didn't go out and vote just because they weren't interested. It was very, oh, it's the same thing either way because no one saw it as realistic that Donald Trump would be president. So they didn't rush out for Hillary. I think in a world where we'd already experienced uh, Trump, people would have rushed out and voted for Hillary too just to get Trump out. So I think there is a lot of forgetting the, the times. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I would I would be willing to guess that a lot of the people who told you they just there was no way Trump was going to win were in Los from? Angeles, New York, Washington. I travel the country a lot in my work. As horrified as I was, that Trump won, I was not that deeply surprised. Right. I had seen the rage out there and I had been deeply concerned uh, that the Democrats didn't seem to be hearing it. Mm. Well, Marianne, and it's a pleasure. they're not hearing it now. Right. They're not. It's a pleasure as always to have you with us. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. It's always great being with you. Thank you so much. We'll have more Rising right after this.